Greetings this Tuesday morning in the seventh week of Easter as we prepare for our Feast of Pentecost to come this Sunday. My name is Ken Pepin. I'm the rector here at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Fairport, New York, and delighted to share in this devotion time of prayer. It is a beautiful day here today in Fairport, and um, I hope that each of you are experiencing similar weather. Um, this time of spring always gives us an opportunity to uh, reflect on God's grace and the abundance of, abundance of abundance of love all around us. So we are delighted to be with you today. <clears throat> Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. To death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives for God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive in God and Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Our psalm chosen for today is Psalm 97. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are around about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. A fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees it and is afraid. The mountains melt like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in false gods. Bow down before them, all you gods. Zion hears and is glad, and the cities of Judah rejoice because of your judgments, O Lord. For you are the Lord, most high over all the earth, you are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his saints and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and the joy of gladness for those who are true-hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Our scripture passage today continues with the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 through 17. After the Lord had appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go, he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers in his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs in the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and great, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter first, say peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town, people welcome you, eat what is set before you, cure the sick who are there, and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go into the streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off and protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. I tell you, on that day it will be more tolerable for Sodom than for that town. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the deeds of the power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would, never have, they would have repented long ago, sitting in sackcloth and ashes. But at the judgment it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted in heaven? No, you will be brought down to Hades. 
whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The seventy retort returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name even the demons submit to us. The Gospel of the Lord. This gospel reading often um, is used <laughs> in most uh, vocational, um, um, how would you say, those who are preparing for ordained ministry or those who are sent out in missions or so on is often find this gospel as a, a good tool to give some direction on what to expect out there in, in the wilderness, so to speak. Um, and the idea of carrying um, nothing extra with you, but to go and to rely on the goodwill and grace and love of people um, is, is pretty, a, a pretty solid practice, I think. Um, it, is a, uh, it is a joy and wonder when one goes out in mission to realize the one encounters the very grace of God sometimes out there <laughs> where you least expect it to be. But I think of this idea of, of um, not carrying any extra bags or luggage or other things that we carry around with us. I, I think all, all, also metaphorically, we're, we're, um, what are the things that we tend to carry around with us that prevent us from from um, really leaving our peace in a place or, or being um, open to the presence of God. Sometimes we carry with us all sorts of um, notions of, of what, or preconceived notions of what um, would meet us. We have histories or people um, have told us before, oh, watch out for that one, or be careful for here, or look out, and all in good interest, you know, for our safety and so on, but um, some of that we carry with us that really prevents us from being open to God's Spirit. So it's important to think about that whenever we enter into a new relationship with someone, or start a new ministry, or do something that's... Um, different, that um, to ask well, what are the things that we're carrying? What are the ways in which um, those obstacles become uh, deterrents for God's grace? Um, because if you never get to a place where you're open, um, it's hard then to bring peace, isn't it? <laughs> um, if we're holding all of our grudges and all of the things that we have against someone, it's hard to then sit at a table and be open to discuss the possibility of forgiveness. Um, we need to be, we need to let go. We need to trust. Um, so once again, there's another day of, of heavy thoughts <laughs> for a spring day perhaps. But it's a good opportunity for us to uh, re-engage in uh, these, these, this thinking of what is it? How are we freed up to bring the peace of Jesus to our neighbors? So we continue to pray for one another. We're very um, conscious of the horrendous bombing that continues um, in the Middle East, in Jerusalem, or in Israel, and in, uh, in the Palestinian territories. Um, for all that is there, if, if, if anything would, would uh, be needed is today's reading, isn't it? Uh, to open up opportunities for peace, for forgiveness, for moving on beyond this conflict. For justice, for the right use of God's creation. Um, all of these things we pray for in our hearts this day. We pray also for those suffering from this pandemic, 
those, again, who come from areas of our world where vaccines are non-existent. Um, and we pray for a generous world that would respond to that need um, without thought of concern for themselves, but of um, with true generosity and, and um, love for neighbor. We pray for our, um, our leadership throughout our, our world, um, for those entrusted with uh, the public trust, uh, for those who are um, called on to guide us, to be clear thinking, to open us to uh, possibilities and adventures. We pray for um, all those who have asked for their, our prayers this day, for those that are <clears throat> who are struggling in health, those who need uh, support, um, for all who struggle in, in issues of mental health, they're often quiet and no one knows uh, the darkness and, and struggle and suffering people endure, that we might continue to um, provide as a church safe places for people to um, again work through these challenges our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God Almighty and everlasting Father, you've brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we may not fall into sin, nor be overcome by adversity. But in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. May God bless you, fill you with peace, with openness, with trust of God's Spirit in your life. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Have a good day.